this. So I have my rise, I have my waist, and now I want to fix this situation. See how that's a hole in there? That is a leaking hazard. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be talking about my beginner's cloth diaper advice and routine. This is something that I started about two years ago and I definitely haven't been consistent with it. I have gone through ups and downs that I might talk about as well as breaks when I had Carter, my second born son, but now I'm getting back into the swing of things and I'm really excited about it. So one of my biggest things that I suggest to new cloth diaperers is to not stress about your routine. If you go on YouTube, if you go on Facebook mom groups, if you go on cloth diaper mom groups, you are going to see a crap ton of information. You're gonna see different worksheets and look at your washer and how many pounds per whatever and this kind of detergent works and this one doesn't and what if this smells like a barnyard? What if it smells like ammonia? Like just so many things. Don't stress about that at the beginning. One of the things that I did was took everything that I saw with a grain of salt. So I took those those works those worksheets. I looked at them, kind of was like, eh, not really my thing. I just kind of want to see what I can do, see if I can do it by myself and figure out a good routine for me. I was using disposables at the time, so I did have some more time to like get the hang of cloth diapering in the beginning. And now I think I have a really good routine for me, for my kids, for my washer and my detergent. So I will say that just because this works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you and your kids, your washer, your detergent. You get what I'm saying? Try things out. If one thing doesn't work, change it. It's not the end of the world. The Facebook group Cloth Diapers for Beginners is a really, really helpful group. They have thousands of people in that group. So definitely check that out. That is where I get a lot of my information from. They do have a website, I believe. I think I've seen it once or twice, but it's really, really helpful. And I highly suggest you do that just for community to be able to post and see if other people have the same issues as you, if you have a new issue. Um, people are able to help and they will help, so try to utilize that resource. My um, general rule is a cold rinse, so I will put all of my poop and pee diapers, more on that later, um, poop and pee diapers right into the washer and I will do a cold rinse, so it's basically a cold cycle with no detergent in it. Um, my second cycle is going to be really hot, it's going to be with detergent and then it's also going to have an extra rinse on like the end of that cycle. So it'll rinse in the cycle and then an extra rinse and then I'll typically be good. So if you use too much detergent, you will get detergent buildup. This is something that's decently easy to either figure out that you have it or easy to fix. Um, the swish test is something that you can do in water, just like regular plain water. You take an insert and you want to like right out of the washer and you want to like swish it in there, like see and squeeze the water out of it and soak it up and squeeze it out and just swish it around. If the water turns cloudy, if the water's bubbly, then obviously that means that you have extra leftover detergent in there and that is not a good sign. And you'll need to continuously wash the diapers until that doesn't happen anymore. Detergent buildup will cause your diapers to leak, unfortunately, because with all of that like, soap on the diapers and the inserts, it will literally just repel all of the liquid and it'll just like come out the sides and it's really not a good time. RLR is a great stripping tool. Um, you can find it on Amazon. I do have them right here. I will probably post a picture with more information. So this does say that you can use it whenever. I would typically do this in my bathtub. So put a bathtub of all my cloth diapers in there, fill up the water, and then sprinkle maybe one or two packets of this and it will clean them really, really, really well. This is if you get like detergent buildup and you start getting like your diapers start smelling really bad, like that ammonia smell, and they're not coming out. This is your stuff. I would highly suggest to not put your diapers in the dryer if you don't have to. I had to for a couple months when I was living in Michigan. It's not good for the elastics on them or the waterproof liner on the inside. It can kind of just like 
wreak havoc on it and make holes in the liners and then you're just your baby's just gonna leak all over the place if you are going to use the dryer to dry your diapers I highly suggest doing like a low, low, low heat and like a tumble dry. That's probably going to be the best thing for your diapers um, besides the fact of hang hanging them. Whether that's on a clothesline, they do have indoor clotheslines on Amazon, 25 bucks, you're welcome. As well as like just like standalone drying racks that you can also get as well. Um, I do the clothesline inside my apartment and it has been amazing laundry detergent is a very important factor again go in the cloth diapers for beginners facebook page and just do a little bit more research and um search the different kinds of brands and detergents that they do have and suggest i was using all free and clear detergent so it's like a white box it is now unfortunately discontinued on amazon now i am unfortunately using tide powder i really don't like the fragrance in it but i that's what i have right now so i'm just using it and yeah so far no problems so that's really good i do know that these cloth diapers groups do suggest powder over liquid i'm not really sure why do your own googling but they do suggest powder over liquid to get a better clean. Make sure you have an overnight routine and a daytime routine. So I'll kind of go in a little bit more detail about my routine um, regarding daytime and nighttime and what I do. So for daytime use, I use Nora's nursery diapers. This is what Nora's nursery diapers look like. Um, they are pretty thin pretty like basic cloth diapers yeah they have the hole in the back right here where you shove the insert all the way through like this all the way in like this and then you pull it out the same way as well so again for my daytime diapers i use my nora's nursery it's only one gusset so the gusset is this elastic um, edge right here that's gonna keep all the pee and the poop in right here and I will also use, this is a Nora's Nursery Bamboo insert. So I really love these. They're really thick for bamboo inserts. A lot of bamboo inserts are either thinner than this. I think this is a five layer, maybe seven layer bamboo insert from Nora's Nursery. So I'll just put this right in to the diaper like this. I put my whole entire hand here and then my hands here with my knuckles and I'm holding it inside and then here I'll pinch the top with the liner in it and then pull my hand out give it a little like flatten out in the diaper and make sure it's just all flat in there and comfortable for comfortable for the baby like that and then now it's in there it's all flat and then it just goes right on their little booties just like that so that's what I use for daytime diapers it's typically my boys are typically not a heavy wetter so that one insert will last maybe two hours and then I'll just change the diaper again so these are pocket diapers hence the, the pocket in the back where you shove the insert in so they cannot be reused that's the one unfortunate thing about pocket diapers another one that i have another brand that i have is la petite hour hours or something i don't know um it's this brand right here it is i believe it's a canadian brand i know that i got these from canada my dad had to pick them up for me and these have um a lot this is a snap diaper i will say that this one is a snap diaper as well you see all the buttons it snaps this is a snap diaper as well but this one is double pocketed so it has this top pocket and this bottom pocket so this is really nice to be able to kind of shove the insert and like pack it full in here and then this one is also double gusseted so see how there's this one right here, the inside one, and then there's the outside one. So I would use the double gusseted ones for nighttime because it does give me a little bit more like security, I'm trying to avoid leaks, especially at night when they're sleeping for longer amounts of time. So again, I'll get this close. This is the double gusset. 
right here so it has to go through this one if it's gonna leak and this one if it's gonna leak so again this is la petite and i really really love both of the brands that i have the third and final one that i use is still the la petite brand it's basically the exact same thing double pocketed top and bottom as well as double gusseted but this one is velcro so it has these this, the rise snaps right here, but then it is also Velcro. So these come undone. It has a lot of fuzz in there, sorry. And then you Velcro it like so around your baby or toddler. So I really like these ones for bedtime just because it really does like form to your baby's body. Unlike, I mean, the snaps can as well, but you're kind of limited on like the snap width um, between the, the, the buttons. But this one you can literally get as tight or as loose as you want, like on your baby. So yeah, so again, at, at, during the day, I'll use Nora's Nursery with one bamboo insert. And at night, I will typically use a Velcro double gusseted one, as well as, yeah, this is a hemp insert. So it's really thick. It's really like not like super flexible compared to the bamboo ones that you can literally just like crumble up. This one is a lot thicker and a lot more like coarse, I guess. So I would typically put this one on and this one, the hemp is going to be your super absorber. It is the one that you're gonna want some kind of double layer for. So I would typically do the bamboo first because bamboo absorbs fast and put the bamboo over the hemp. So I have the bamboo on top closest to the baby and then the hemp on the bottom. As soon as they pee, the liquid is gonna hit the bamboo, soak it in fast because it's super absorbing and leak through and soak up this hemp one, which is gonna hold the most amount of pee. So this is gonna be like your super absorber. This is gonna be your quick absorber. So the hemp and the bamboo. So I will go back to Nora's nursery diapers. These are very similar, if not the same, to the brand Alva Baby. Um, Nora's nursery does have way better colors. They're way cuter, but they're pretty much the same thing. So you can get cheaper diapers on Alva Baby. I also have newborn cloth diapers. These ones I really did not use. These are the brand Alva Baby, so they're very, 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 very similar to the Nora's Nursery pocket diapers. These ones are pocket diapers as well, but as you can see, the size difference, this one is all in one, or this one is um, normal size, and this one is the newborn size, so they are pretty different in um, in sizes. I didn't use the newborn diapers just because it was so difficult to like get my hand in to stuff this diaper. Like it's pretty darn tight in there and the inserts are so small and it was really difficult to kind of flatten them out um, lengthwise like this when I was doing it. So I, I know that they have like tongs tricks, like, like the kitchen tongs, like the long ones. You can kind of like like clasp the insert and then shove the tongs into the diaper and a lot of people do that way I just didn't think it was worth it um, especially when they're only gonna be in these diapers for I don't even know up until what was it like 10 or 12 pounds which is not not big at all because they are newborn diapers we really didn't use these just because we wanted to wait until the umbilical cord fell off and make sure it was all clean and healed before we had any kind of like fabric rubbing on it potentially. Another thing that I will mention is 100% breast milk fed babies diapers can go straight into the washing machine. You heard me. So pee and poop. Um, if you are 100% feeding just breast milk, no formula, no rice cereal, not baby led weaning, not purees, just literally just breast milk into their body you can take the the diaper that has been soiled with pee or poop take the insert out and chuck them both into the washer this is because breast milk poop is completely water soluble so it breaks down in the water and it just washes right out this can be gross to some people but if you do the research about it if you 
look things up. You also can wash your washer with um, washing machine like cleaners to kind of give yourself a um, peace of mind if you need that. But really you wouldn't need anything and you can just shove them right into the washer and that's it. So I will show you guys a little bit of an example about how to cloth diaper with my trusty bear here. I think this was mine when I was a kid. So I'm going to be cloth diapering this bear. I'm going to show you um, different buttons, how to do the snaps, how to do all the things. So here we go. So this is going to be my helper today. This is my stuffed animal bear that I had from childhood that is now Cadence. So I'm going to start off by showing the one size fits all or most or whatever, not newborn diaper, just the one size diaper that is Nora's nursery brand. So if you look at this diaper, I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Okay, so there are three snaps here, one, two, three. And then there is the top row of buttons here, the bottom row of buttons. And then this, these nine down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, are a completely separate thing. So with these buttons right here, these nine buttons down here, these are called the rise buttons. So if your baby is on the smaller side, you can make the diaper smaller, like up and down wise. And you can snap these buttons like this and make the diaper smaller long ways. Okay, so this is gonna be from the back of their butt all the way to their belly button and kind of cup them in the private area. So if you want a smaller baby, it's gonna be the smallest setting here. And then if you want a bigger baby, you're gonna skip this bottom row and just do these ones right here. Like that. And then there you go. So this skip the whole bottom one. So this one would have been the tighter option and then this one is the more loose or bigger option. You can also just leave them all out like this. If you have a toddler, then this is probably gonna be your best option. But basically just go based on how big your baby is and what their needs are. That's the great thing about cloth diapers is they fit everybody. It's, it's really great. So those are the rise, those are the bottom nine, okay? So now the top buttons, these ones right here, and then there's these two top buttons here as well. So this, these are the, gonna be the ones that are gonna be going around the waist of the baby. So you are going to obviously put the diaper on the baby like this. So this is my teddy bear. And I'm gonna go here. And I think that this diaper needs to be smaller or maybe on my smallest setting for the bear. So I'm gonna put the rise diapers or the rise buttons all the way on the smallest setting that it can be. Just like that, okay? And then, so you can't see the buttons anymore because they're all done, but they're actually under there, if you can see them. So now, I'm going to put the diaper on just like a normal diaper. I'm going to go above the legs and around the hips. And then I'm going to bring these buttons here and make it as tight as it will possibly go. Maybe not super tight because I'll squish the bear. And then this other side, tuck it in just like a diaper like so. So I wanted to do this so you guys can kind of see how it's supposed to go right now. I did find the correct width around the bear. So it's pretty, it's pretty snug. There is a rule, a two finger rule. So you have to be able to shove two fingers and wiggle right here to make sure that it's not too tight for the baby. So yes, so I have my rise, I have my waist. And now I want to fix this situation. See how that's a hole in there? That is a leaking hazard. So um, liquid and poop can co come straight out there and then you're not, it's not gonna be good. So the top row is done, the rise is done, and now we're gonna do the middle row or the second from the top row. So this is where this button comes in. So these are the two top ones and this is where the third button comes in. You're gonna to wanna to move this button wherever you want. It does not need to be 
in like the same lineup that it is where it's like one two and then the third you can move it to the first you can move it to the third you can basically play around with where you want this to be based on your kids um, leg circumference so this guy is actually pretty skinny in the leg so I'm gonna move it up here and up here so now that is all done and you can see it's like wrapped around the leg of course this is a bear and not a human and it's a little bit tighter than it was so you're gonna want a good tightness around the thigh and around well around the back of the leg like that so another big tip that I have is for the rise you want to push up so if your diaper is like weird like this you want to stick your two fingers and push up in that area so that you have a flat area see how that's flat and flat that's how you want it you also want to do the same thing on the other side the outsides and push up so that way you're not getting any like bulking and it's a better seal around your baby's legs now typically i'll go around roll the baby over a little bit make sure that everything's going good here kind of adjust this i'll like run my finger around here and around towards the baby's front just to make sure that it has a good seal on the baby's legs like this run it around and then make sure the good seal is in the front as well and then that is that's how you do a diaper a cloth diaper so this is would be the first like the daytime diapers that we do have and yeah and then you just undo them you do not need to undo the rise unless you want to when you throw it in the washing machine and now i will show you the velcro diaper so you obviously undo the velcro put this down obviously you're gonna have the insert inside as well baby on top of the diaper diaper up like so I would typically do this first and then again this baby is very small so I'm going to do a really high rise because it is very small like that tuck the rise up tuck the rise up all up you want to make sure that you have a good um a good like seal around the legs and no like weird like bumpies if it was like this around the leg obviously that is a leaking hazard right there so you're gonna to want to tuck that up tuck that up tuck that around check the legs like this check the legs like this and then i would go back and i would reseal the velcro and make sure that it is a tight and good seal around the baby like that so the baby is now officially sealed all around no leaks no leaks this is a really good fit especially for at night and this is the one that i prefer to do at night just because i can get a really good accurate seal around the baby's waist um and it won't be too tight or too loose so there is that. I think that is all that I have for you guys today, and I will see you guys next time.